Welcome to Travel Talk, where our expert magical memory planners discuss ways you can have fun, memorable, and stress-free family vacations. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Travel Talk. I just got back from the Disney's Earmarked Owners Summit, which is a special conference for travel agencies that are part of their Earmarked program, um, which is just a program that is for agencies that sell a lot of Disney destinations and we're in partnership with them. And it is such an amazing time. And the best part is we learned so much about what's upcoming and happening in the new year. And so what was top of mind for me that I really wanted to talk about on this episode is Disneyland. Disneyland is possibly my favorite Disney park of all. And people are often surprised by that because so many times people think of Disneyland as what it was really years ago when it was really a smaller park and it is not anymore. And so There is a big celebration happening in 2025. It is going to be Disneyland's 70th anniversary. So they gave us these cool hats. Um, And it is their 70th anniversary. And so I started to think about like, what can you only do at Disneyland? And so there's a lot. And that's why I love it so much. But I tried to, for this podcast, narrow it down to the top five things that you can only do at Disneyland. And it's really about what sets Disneyland apart. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first one is probably the biggest one of them all. And only at Disneyland can you walk where Walt Disney walked. So Disneyland being the original park designed by Walt Disney during his lifetime, he was there on opening day, he gave the speeches, he welcomed guests, most of the time he was in the park, uh, walking around, giving autographs and meeting with people and riding the attractions and testing things out, making sure everything was to you know his uh, level that he wanted it. And so when you walk through Disneyland, there's just something a little bit different knowing that you're walking where Walt walked. And so some years ago when I went to Disneyland, I think it was my first trip there, I was able to do a tour called Walk in Walt's Footsteps. And it was amazing. Um, that tour has kind of changed over the years. They changed the name from time to time. Currently, there's a tour uh, called Walt's Main Street Story Tour, um, which is a a little bit of a shorter tour um, compared to what I had done, but a great one if you really want to walk in Walt's footsteps and learn more about that. So originally when he was in the park, he had an office. His office was over the fire station. And when he was in the office, he would put his light on because he'd be working in there late at night and, and doing different things. And the cast knew that if that light was on, Walt was in the park and they better, you know, make sure they were at the top of their game because he would be wandering around and looking to make sure everything was good. And so um, after Walt passed, they decided to leave that light on. And so if you do go to Disneyland, especially if it's your first time, stop on Main Street at the firehouse, look up to where Walt's original apartment is and take a look for that light. And that light being lit is kind of a representation that Walt is still there. His spirit is still there. He's still with the park. Um, So it's kind of a neat thing about Disneyland that's just super unique. Um, After While he was still alive, uh, he had this apartment. He loved it. He used it a lot. But as his family grew and he had more friends and family to invite to the parks and do things with, uh, he kind of felt like he was running out of space. So he wanted to build a bigger space. So they built or started to build a bigger space over Pirates of the Caribbean in the New Orleans Square area. And uh, his wife was very involved, uh, Lily, in the design with some of the designers, and they they built this beautiful space. It didn't quite get finished before he passed. And so after he passed, that project basically got put on hold. So it was originally called the Royal Suite. And it was put on hold uh, for quite some time. And then in later in about 2006, they decided to kind of reignite that project and complete it. And so as part of the year of a million dreams, they finished that apartment area and you, we went up and toured it as part of our tour. Although I don't know that that's currently on the existing tour, Um, but we were able to go up there as part of that. And now it's called the Disneyland dream suite. And like I said, it is right over pirates of the Caribbean in new Orleans square. Uh, Just like another really unique thing about Disneyland. And I don't know that, that to me is like one of my favorite things, just being there and knowing that 
Walt had been there. It was his original dream and, and that it came to fruition, you know, during his lifetime and he was a part of it. So the second thing that you can only do at Disneyland is in 2025, you'll be able to meet Walt Disney himself. Um, They are going to build the first Walt Disney animatronic. And you know from the other animatronics of uh, Abraham Lincoln, for example, that it's lifelike. It's like talking, you know, listening to them talk and, and being in their presence, so to speak. So they are building the first Walt Disney animatronic in Disneyland is where it will debut um, in that main opera house that is right at the front of the park. Currently, there is a tribute to Abraham Lincoln there. Uh, for a while, it's just going to be the Walt Disney performance, which is be called Walt Disney Magical Life. And then after a little while, they'll they'll swap it and they'll kind of go back and forth between that and the Abraham Lincoln uh, performance that is there currently. So this is just an incredible way, again, to like hear his voice and kind of see him and and kind of be in his presence, uh, which can only happen at Disneyland. So that's pretty cool. The third thing that only happens at Disneyland is it is a walkable resort. That is something that's foreign to us if Walt Disney World is your home resort. Disneyland is completely walkable. So you have three on-site Disneyland resort hotels. There are good neighbor hotels on Harbor Boulevard, which are not Disney properties, but ones that work in partnership with Disney, meaning you can have a package that includes a good neighbor hotel with your tickets and bundle it together in a Walt Disney travel package. The uh, There are several hotels on Harbor Boulevard as well that are completely walkable. So that means that leaving your hotel room, walking to the park, hitting security, then going kind of into that Disney bubble, which includes Disneyland Park and the um, California Adventure Park and the downtown Disney area. After you hit security, you can hit all three of those areas, bounce back and forth between the parks, go out into downtown Disney, have something to eat, come back into the parks, all, all within that Disney safety bubble, so not having to hit security again. And, and be in that whole area, completely walkable. If you are, have a mobility concern, if you have little ones and you have strollers that have to be folded up, no buses, no unpacking, you're just good to go. Your babies fall asleep during the fireworks or after the fireworks or in the evening, not a problem. You just walk them right back in their stroller to your room and put them into bed. So the fact that it's walkable is so great. It's also a huge time saver. So even if you aren't having strollers in your travel party or mobility concerns, the fact that you can be in the park and then back in your room in no time is amazing. Uh, if you're the type of family that likes to take a midday pool break, naps, pool break. In our family, my husband likes to nap. The kids like to play in the pool. So if we can head back to the hotel and it takes 10 minutes to walk back to the room, we maximize that break time because we're not using a lot of bus time to get there and get back and kind of trying to buffer that all out. So super easy to get back to the hotel room. And the same thing at the end of the night. At the end of the night, if you want to stay till fireworks and it's, you know, maybe crowded at the end of the night, everybody's trying to leave, but you're just walking out. You're not waiting for a bus. You're not waiting in line. You just walk right out and head back to your resort. So it's amazing that it's a walkable resort. Um, one of my favorite things about Disneyland, I feel like I can just pop in and out, head back to my room, super easy. Uh, one of the really cool things is if you stay at the Grand Californian, that resort actually has a private entrance from inside the resort into California Adventure. So one, the security lines and everything are much shorter because it's only people coming through that resort. Um, and two, you're you're right there. You're right at the park. It's right where like Grizzly River Run is, if you're familiar with the park, uh, that side of the park. Um, you just come right in right there. In fact, our family, remember, we like to take naps and go to the pool. Uh, middle of the day, the kids really loved Grizzly River Run. They loved the, the water ride. And uh, so we were at the pool and the kids were swimming. We went in the park, got a fast pass, came back to the pool. Uh, when our, it's time for our fast pass, kids went into the park, rode a grocery river run, went back to the pool, signed up for another one, went back to the ride, got in line, came back to the pool. I mean, they were like, Grizzly River Run was part of their pool day. It was hilarious. Um, fast passes and lightning leads have changed a little bit since then. But I mean, that's the proximity. It's just so close. So fantastically convenient if that is what you're looking for. There's another hotel that we'll talk about a little bit later that also has a private entrance into the park, although it's not 
connected to the hotel, but they have a private entrance. Um, so that convenience of the walkability of Disneyland, only at Disneyland, do you get that convenience of having everything at your fingertips so close? The next thing, only at Disneyland can Pixar fans live out the movies that they love. So there is so much for Pixar, Pixar fans at Disneyland. And if you have, I was going to say little ones, but really adult ones. My 17-year-old son is obsessed with the movie Cars still. He's been obsessed with it since he was a kid. Uh, but it's still one of his go-to movies. I'll have a bunch of his buddies over, 17 to 19-year-olds. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, we're going to watch Cars. Like, okay, great. Um, so they just, they just love that movie. But you know, only at Disneyland does those things really come alive. So in the California Adventure Park, there is a Cars Land that is just absolutely amazing. This land, it's like walking into Radiator Springs. I mean, just down that main drag, like just out of the movie, um, there is all the little spots. So there's like Flo's V8 Cafe if you want to get a meal. Uh, everything's kind of themed around like, you know, cars going to eat and stuff. I mean, it's crazy. Um, there's cozy cones. So there's uh, several cones and each one has different food items. And so you can kind of go up to a cozy cone and get like a cone that's full of mac and cheese or, you know, just all different uh, food items that are all related to that uh, with these big orange cones, you know, traffic cones. So you can go to the cozy cones, looks like the cozy cone motel from the movie, but um, they serve food. There's uh, attractions in there like um, Luigi's, Luigi's, I'm going to get the name wrong, Jungle Jamboree or something like that. But it's, it's, it's crazy. It's like a fun ride around with like Mater and like the tractors and things like that. There's, there's a several attractions in there. I mean, the, the big one that everyone knows may know about is the radiator Springs racers, which if you're familiar with test track at Walt Disney world, it's sort of similar, but I'd have to say way better. Um, but sort of a similar thing Two cars race each other. You go through radiator Springs, you go out and take a race or lap around the track. Uh, super, super fun. And Again, if your family member, whether they're 3, 13, or 17, or 35, is obsessed with cars and the cars movies, they, they're they going to love it. It's, it's just amazing. It's an amazing land. And then if you think you're done with it during the day, please come back at night, particularly right at sunset when all the lights go on. And then it's, again, just like the movie. The street lights up, and it's it's just beautiful. So we love um we love Cars Land, if you can't tell. Uh, the other Pixar things there is Pixar Pier. Uh, it's just an area rebuilt with like multiple Pixar friends. So there's things from Inside Out. There's things from Toy Story. There's things from The Incredibles. And then they rebuilt the pier, which was kind of like a San Francisco pier. It is now San Francisco for you fans of Big Hero 6. Uh, lots of places to eat in there and areas to be. I mean, who doesn't want to go to San Francisco? So such a cool, cool thing. Um, and then across the way, is in one of the Disney hotels. I said there was three. One has been remade into a Pixar hotel. So it's Pixar Place Hotel. This is unbelievable. So not only does you have theming throughout the hotel, the rooms, they have an amazing, the, the pool deck is on the third floor, which is kind of hard to imagine, but the way the hotel is, it's up on the third floor. So it has a great view. And several nights uh, when there's fireworks, you can go up to your third floor pool deck and watch the fireworks while Disney's playing the music synchronized. So you, it's just like being in the park. It's an amazing way to watch the watch the watch the fireworks and be at your hotel, especially if you have little ones that need to go back and go to bed. Um, great way to do that. They also have a private entrance. I mentioned that before. So they have a private entrance into California Adventure as well. So they can go from their hotel. It's across the street, so it's not attached to the hotel. But there's a walkway easy to do walk across the street. Uh, and then they have their private entrance kind of next to where Gra Grand Californian is that will take them into California Adventure, which is super fantastic for those guests staying at the Pixar Place Hotel. So, I mean, if you have Pixar fans in your family, this is the place to be to really immerse yourself in that between what's happening at California Adventure. You could even stay at the Pixar Hotel and, you know, great. So Pixar fans only at Disneyland. It's for you, right? Okay, the next one is only at Disneyland 
can you experience the Avengers campus? Avengers campus is amazing. So these might be the same people because my 17 year old who loves cars is also a huge Avengers fan. Uh, So Avengers campus is so, so cool. Uh, again, it's fully immersive. So as soon as you walk into Avengers Campus, you hear the music, you might see Spider-Man hanging off a building, you might see other Avengers like walking around on the rooftops where they're like, you know, heading to class and they'll wave and say hi, or they might be walking through or they might be having a dance party or, you know, outside of um, Mission Guardians of the Galaxy, Mission Breakout, whatever. Like there's just so much going on. Um, But as soon as you go into that land, the music changes and you are in Avengers Campus where you can train to be a superhero yourself, right? So, so fun. So there's currently two attractions in this area, which are some of the most fun. Again, super unique. So one of them is Web Slingers. Uh, If you, this is really cool because you go, I love rides where you do something like versus just ride it. And then it makes me want to ride it over and over because then I want to win and I want to beat my score and and all that stuff. So it's like a game and a ride all together. So super, super fun. But uh, Web Slingers is like that where you're going to be in a a car of four people and you are going to have to shoot those webs out and get these like bug things that they've invented that are taking over uh, and save the world. And, uh, and you got to do it. You got to get those webs going and you got to do it. So, so fun, such a fun, interactive attraction, something that is very unique. Uh, the second attraction there is the guardians of the galaxy mission breakout, which if you are familiar with tower of terror, you might recognize it a little bit, but it is so different because of the music and the theming is just completely unique. And I love it. I love, love, love it. I love the music. I love rocking out to the guardians of the galaxy. I think they're hilarious. Uh, so such, such a fun attraction. And then out front of there, sometimes they have a little dance party if you want to hang out with them. So super fun. And then you have like all the food options. So there's a few little stands and stuff, but the one I really want to talk about is, uh, PIMS, PIMS test kitchen. So this is where things that are big get made really small and things that are small get made really big. So you might have a ginormous pretzel or you might have a little tiny chicken sandwich. Um, And so they have like all these different food items, super fun, super interesting. They also have um, a tasting lab, which is actually like a place for drinks. So they... The drinks come in a beaker because that's fun. Uh, and they have mocktails and cocktails and, and different choices for, so something for everyone there. And uh, you get these drinks in a beaker and it's outside and it's California and it's great. So just so unique to Disneyland is the Avengers Campus. Love it. And then what's coming is there's going to be two new attractions coming to Avengers Campus in Disneyland. So not necessarily in 2025, but these were announced and they are going to be coming down the road. So, you know, that doesn't mean wait. It means that you need to go now and see Avengers Campus and then there's going to, you're going to love it. You're going to want to do it again. And when you come back, there'll be even more to see the next time. So that's, that's super cool. So these five things really just scratch the surface. Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. And I want to clarify that because sometimes I hear people at Disney World saying it's the happiest place on earth. And I'm like, no, Disney World is the most magical place on earth, but Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. And only at Disneyland can you experience so many of these really cool things. And so, again, this just scratches the surface of what is there. Uh, Mickey's Toontown is amazing. The character interactions are totally different. They'll just be walking down the road and you can get a quick, quick selfie or wave and say hi. And um, they're just super extra special character interactions. And there's amazing festivals throughout the year. They have a food and wine festival. They have a Chinese New Year festival. Uh, they have different cultural celebrations. So, so many, so many fun things happening at Disneyland. Uh, that you just really don't want to miss. And the other cool thing they do is holiday overlays. So uh, at certain times of year, once we get into fall, so some of them are kind of Halloween-ish and some of them are kind of more Christmassy or holiday-ish, but there are attractions that get an overlay. They kind of close them for a little bit and they kind of dress them up for the holiday. And then they reopen them for a certain period of time and it's like a different attraction. And it's it's so fun, so festive. It just makes things a little bit different. So also a great time of year to go to Disneyland is at the holidays. But anyway, so much to do at Disneyland. We just love it. Uh, so much to do in 2025 as they're celebrating their 70th anniversary. And it is going to bring even more 
special nighttime shows and special celebrations and merchandise and all the things, right? So 2025 could be a great, great year to do Disneyland. If you have never done it before, take my word for it. It's an amazing, amazing park complex. And if you have done it before and it's been a while, try it again because there's so much that has changed there. It is just so amazing. And there's a lot you can do only at Disneyland. Oh, 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 o